today. If you would, go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. And when you get there, uh, turn to uh, verse 26 of chapter 26. Chapter 26 of Matthew, starting at verse 26. And we're going to read the verse 35 together. Matthew chapter 26, verses 30, uh, 26 through 35. And when you get there, say, oh yeah. yeah. All right, amen. And this is what Matthew recorded. Matthew 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine, from now until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the story of the gospel. But it is not just a story. It's our life. And it gives us life. And so, Father, my prayer is that anyone who is here this morning, they're trying to figure out life. And they're trying to figure out who you are and who they are in this life. God, may all the clarity of the Holy Spirit come. Lord, that you would move my flesh out of the way. Lord, that the very Spirit of God may minister to our hearts and minds. Lord, that it would give us understanding. Lord, that it would bring us peace. God, that it would bring resolution in our hearts and minds. Lord, that it would bring salvation to those who are lost and desperately need you. Father, we thank you for this moment. And we thank you for Easter. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior, and our Lord. Amen. I think everyone on the planet needs to hear this one statement. I think it is so very true and important, relevant for every person, every human being. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, how wise you are, or how dumb you are. Amen? It doesn't matter. You have to understand this one statement. Suffering, defeat, and failure in life is certain. You have to understand that. You will suffer defeat and failure in life. It is certain. That will happen. That's not a, oh, will I fail? Oh, will I mess up? Oh, will I have struggles in life? No. Listen, you will have struggles in this life. But fear not. There is a God who loves you. And this is the gospel message. As, as Jesus is ministering them in this way, the Gospel Matthew shares with us such an intimate moment. Jesus is having one final meal with his disciples in this way that he'd been meeting with them for about three years in this same way. You see, because after this night, everything was going to be different. Everything that they were going to experience from that point was going to be completely different Jesus than they had known. And so this was such an intimate and beautiful, precious moment he was sharing with them. See, they didn't understand the bread and they didn't understand the cup, but they would after that moment. 
We live in a generation that fears failure. Have you all noticed that? Have, I think we live in a generation where everybody wins a, an award. Amen. Whether you played the game or not, you're going to get a prize. And that's bad because, listen, I grew up in a generation where my parents said, well, tough luck. You know what, I believe that, I firmly believe that there are many people who have never been chased by an angry chicken and it shows. Because <laughs> you don't know what real defeat is. You don't know what suffering is. And you can, I mean, even look at our 911 calls. I mean, two particular that always sticks out in my mind is one lady called 911 because McDonald's ran out of chicken nuggets. That was her emergency. It's like maybe she had placed her whole life into this one moment where she would drive up to the drive through window and she would say, this is the one thing I need to bring peace in my life this day. And she ordered and she says, yes, I would like the 12 piece. And they said, no ma'am, we are out. And then she says, oh no, 911. <laughs> Hello, 911, is there an emergency? Yes, there is an emergency, right? They're out of nuggets. Another 911 call, this lady called 911 because someone beat her to a parking space at a mall. And that was her emergency. That was her emergency. Listen, you will have much greater emergencies. You will. You will experience far greater hurts, far greater pains, and far greater losses than those things. See, that is the human expression. This world always takes more than it all ever gives to you. And we'll live our lives with this almost illusion and mirage that that's not true. But the truth is, and it's always, that we will suffer loss. Going back to chickens for a second. You know, I, I grew up in a family, we had, I think we had like 50 or 60 chickens in the yard at one, one time, and I had a family member across the road, he had like geese. You all know these like, these ge the Canadian geese? They're aggressive. They're like super aggressive. You know, and I'm, I was the big brother, you know, I have a younger sister, I was the big brother in that situation. I needed to protect her. And sometimes I did, except from that one rooster. You know, I mean, he had like a comb that came up like a devil horns. We, matter of fact, we called him Lucifer because he was just, he was evil. He needed Jesus. Or he needed to go visit the Chick-fil-A, right? Right, I mean, it's only two things that could go there. But one time that rooster had my sister treed and she had that bucket and she was just swinging that bucket and it kept coming back at her. She hit it, come, coming back to her. And then I just thought, maybe I should do something. Have you ever been in that moment where you see someone just struggling and you say to yourself, maybe I should do something? And you know what? I, I didn't do anything at that time because that was a mean rooster. <laughs> I said, you got it, Tammy. <laughs> hit him again. Several weeks later, a very similar situation happened where uh, these geese got a hold of my sister, and we were kind of picking on them. Let's just be fair, you know? We weren't totally innocent, but one of them grabbed onto the back of her jacket and was trying to take off with her. And I was just kind of seeing if it would. You know, I was like, you know, I was like, well, will, will this happen, you know? Will this goose defy gravity and, and physics? And my grandma came out of nowhere with a broom. And she hit that goose, and it was like, wah, 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 you know? And then she hit me. <laughs> and she hit me with that broom, and she pointed that finger at me. She goes, you need to protect your sister. Yes, ma'am. I was thinking, who's going to protect me from you? <laughs> you don't know defeat until this foot, two foot high creature decimates you. Amen. But life gets so much more harder than that. Amen. So listen, defeat and failure is certain. But listen to this. It's how you come through it. 
and who you know that brings you through it. Do you know that? There's plenty of people on the earth that they should not be here. They absolutely should not. They've defied physics. They've defied reality. They've defied science. They've defied the doctors. But they should not be here. But they are. And I completely believe because God has a purpose that you still must fulfill. Because every one of us will experience the pain of loss, the pain of death. But listen, for the Christian, only the shadow of death touches you. You see, we know life. Not just life of today, not just life for tomorrow, but life for eternity. And Jesus Christ came to give us that life. And here are the apostles, they're following Jesus all around, they're seeing his miracles, they're seeing how amazing he is, and they've never once saw Jesus fail or fall in ministry. Not once. Not once has he ever made a misstep or a misword. Now the apostles, they made plenty of mistakes around Jesus, amen? But they never watched him suffer and fail. And so as Jesus told them repeatedly that I will be taken from you, that I will suffer and I will die, but I am the, on the third day I will rise again. They just didn't understand what he was saying. The, the, the idea that even someone would take Jesus from them because Jesus, he healed people. Jesus, he spoke the word of God with authority. Jesus said, love those who hate you and pray for those who persecute you. Who in the world would hurt such a precious person as Jesus? But they had no idea what was coming that very night and so every word they spoke to Jesus, they meant with all of their hearts. When they looked at Christ and they said, we will die with you, they meant every word. But you have to understand, there will be moments in your life you will fail. But let's look at this passage a little closer. Let's look at verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and what did it say? Broke it. And gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my what? Body. Christians, in this moment, they had no idea the significance of the bread. And I, I, I want every Christian to understand the significance of this moment. Jesus was taking this bread that had a phys physicality to it. And he literally physically broke it in half. And I think we've all seen like Easter plays and passion plays. How many of y'all have ever seen like a passion play? They have the, the whole setup of the, of the table. They're all sitting there and Jesus takes the bread in his hands. We, we had one very similar where one of my friends, he played Jesus. He had dark hair, a big, uh, a dark beard, and, and he, he, he would look just like him. It was amazing. And they had all the apostles as little children. And they're all sitting around the table at the Last Supper. And someone made us homemade bread that morning. And that evening, he took the bread and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this and remember me. And when he tried to break it, he couldn't. The bread got hard. He was going. <laughs> and you know, exactly, people were going. Pooh. And he's trying a little harder. And so, and his name's Sandy, and he would love me telling this story. So he got up a little ways and took it on the table and he pressed it in the table and broke it in half. And all the children laughed. The bread was super hard. Hard as some of our hearts. I think a lot of us are gospel hardened. We've heard it. We know the story. But do you know the story? You see, when he says that this is my body, which is broken to you, and he broke that bread, his body was going to be broken in every single way. His body was going to experience pain and hurt and suffering that few on this earth will ever understand. You see, the Romans had perfected execution. The Romans had perfected punishment. They had this thing called the 40 lashes minus one. And the reason why they called it that is because they discovered when someone would die because of this punishment. See, it takes about 40 to kill somebody. But 39? Well, that's the ticket. Jesus 
was broken for us. His body was broken so that we may be healed. Do you understand this, Christians, the, the significance of the bread, that this is his sacrifice for us? I love how Paul put, we carry the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be seen by all. That we remember what he did. I was helping a gentleman move his father from his bed to the kitchen table. Now his father was a retired vet. Uh, he was, worked hard all of his life. And he had this debilitating disease that was slowly uh, killing his, his nervous system. And uh, he shook, he couldn't walk very well. We moved him and this once strong, just proud man is reduced to having been fed. And as I'm helping his son move him from the bed to the kitchen, I'm looking at the expression of the son's face, and I can see just pain in his eyes. I mean, you, you've seen that. Maybe you've even experienced the same kind of pain because he's moving to this guy who was his world his entire life, and now he's taking care of him. You see, his son owned a really big company. He was doing very well, and so his son decided to early retire, step away from all of it just to take care of his dad. And so as we're moving him to the kitchen, we sit him down, and he's getting the breakfast for him, and I look at him, and we just start talking, and he says, I know what you're thinking. And so, what am I thinking? You're wondering, why, because I'm so well off, why wouldn't I put him somewhere where he'd be taken really good care of? And he said this, my father sacrificed so I could be who I am today. So this is not a sacrifice for me. It's just saying, I love you. See, there's some of us, we don't want nobody to do nothing for us. Amen? Because we don't want to what? Owe anybody. But have you ever thought that someone just loves you and wants to help you. And there are some of us who think taking care of a loved one is a sacrifice. Jesus, his sacrifice was a gift. Do we walk around like we've received the greatest gift this world has ever received? Because his body was broken for you and me. But not only this, but he took the cup. And as he took the cup, look at verse 27. Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of what? Sins. But I say to you, I will not drink this fruit of the vine from now until the day that I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. There's so much here, Christians, that Jesus is saying here in this one moment. He's equating this cup filled with his own blood that will be spilt, but it's not only for a sacrifice, it's for a covering. That means this, that every Christian who accepts Christ Jesus, you've been covered by Christ's blood of the new covenant. Now listen, this is not a new concept. All this is fulfilling prophecy from the Old Testament scriptures. I love some of my favorite scriptures it says on Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, Come now, let's argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. That's you and me. That's you and me. Does that make you happy? I mean, that should make every person in the world, this planet, happy to know that Christ's blood, this new covenant, covers you. But you see, that gift is received by faith. Do you have faith in Christ Jesus? Do you know who he is? Do you know that he loves you? This was the new covenant that was poured out for us. And you know what? Jesus said he wouldn't drink it anew. He wouldn't drink it until he could drink it anew, which, which is very important. Because while he was hanging there on the cross, some people put some uh, gall on some, uh, a sponge. Now this stuff is nasty. It was to help deaden 
the, the feeling and sensitivity. And so they tried to give Jesus some, but he spat it out. He spat out what could make him feel numb from the physical, spiritual, and mental pain he was going through at that time. Listen, Jesus felt every bit of the cross. And he already made a promise that I wouldn't drink until I drink it anew. You know, during that time, Jesus, as he hung on the cross, he said, I thirst. Someone asked me, Pastor Chris, why did Jesus say I thirst? And I said, well, two really important reasons. One, he was parched. He was thirsty. If you went through all of that, I mean, he was so hurting on his journey to the cross, they had to get some random stranger out of the crowd to help him bear the cross to the point in which he'd be crucified. He was broken to the, the, the point where his body was just giving out. He was thirsty, but not only this, it's so significant. Don't you think he was so ready to drink it anew? <laughs> Don't you think he was just picturing that moment in his mind and his heart when he would drink it anew with you and me? At this thing called the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's beautiful. Because there's moments in our lives that we just wish would pass. Amen. Everyone wishes it would just pass. Like, man, oh, okay, God, I'm done with this moment. It's time to move on. But listen, failure will happen. I mean, hasn't anyone ever entrusted something to you and you just mess it up really good? You know what? God's given you this life, and sometimes we're really good at messing it up really good, aren't we? I had uh, some people ask me to house it for them. And I was very young. I was like 18, 19, super irresponsible. But I, I put all my effort into watching their house. They were going to be gone for like two weeks, visiting family. And so I was going to put all my effort in taking care of this family. Now, listen, they had farm animals. I, I didn't have a good track record with farm animals. I did not. But what's very important is you feed and water them. That is what you do. And I'm so pleased to say that I fed and I watered them. I took care of them. So I was very shocked one Tuesday morning when I went out there to feed them and one of their goats were dead. It was like belly up with the legs open. And it was the only one with a collar. You know, if, if one of your farm animals has a collar, that means it's loved. And I'm like, really, Lord? That's the one that they love. That's a collar. So I grabbed my phone and I called my dad. I have the best dad in the world. I man, he's amazing. Because I said, Dad, I need some trash bags and a shovel. And he said, okay, I'll be there. <laughs> he didn't ask me why. <laughs> he didn't like grill me or anything. He was just like, I'll be there for you, son. It's amazing. Get an amazing dad. That was rough. But then the next day, another goat died. I know. It's looking like I'm a mass murderer. <laughs> it was bad. I just totally felt like, oh, man, I, I failed this family. Their goats died. And then the husband said, listen, man, goats get this really weird disease, and it spreads, and they just die. Don't feel too bad about it. Don't you just hate failing, though? Don't you hate failing? It just feels so bad inside just to, to fail, to mess up. Because every single one of us, we want to succeed in life and do well. But listen, Christians, not every battle we fight we're meant to win. I have learned so much more from failure than I've ever learned from success. And every person on this planet needs to understand that a little bit of failure might lead to some victory later. Now listen, I'm not talking about those, those people who are like, well, I guess it was just God's will that I failed. Because listen, sometimes we'll use that as an excuse. Sometimes we'll just halfway something. And sometimes we don't even try at all. And then we're like, well, I guess I was just supposed to fail. No. You see, Christians, if you try as hard as you can and you still fail, listen, then evidently you were supposed to suffer that loss. Because don't you remember what Jesus said to the apostles as Peter drew that sword to protect Jesus in that final hour? And Jesus said, what are you doing? 
Those who live by the sword will die by it. Don't you think that I could call to my father 12 legions of angels and they would not surround and protect me? But Jesus was made and born for that hour. And there are some of us, we are made and born for that hour of hurt. But the question is, do you know who's with you through the pain? Do you know who's carrying you through that hurt? You see, Jesus looked at them after this beautiful moment. And in verse 31, Jesus said, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I, I, have, I will be raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, even, I love Peter so much. Peter said, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said, assuredly or truly I tell you, I say to you, that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, even if I have to what? Even if I have to what? Die. With you, I will not deny you. And so said who? All the disciples. All of them. There will be times in your life, Christians, that you will have to wave the white flag of defeat. You will. But you see, you have to have an understanding. Jesus already won the war. He's, al he's already won. You see, every victory we have from here on out is just the extra. Lot and his wife, they had to run, didn't they? Jacob had to run from his brother Esau. Joseph, he ran from Potiphar's wife. Elisha, he ran from that old Jezebel. Jonah, well, he ran from God. How far did he get? Not far. The apostles all ran and left Jesus alone. There will be times when we will suffer loss. But here's what God does. This is really amazing. God always brings us back to the moments of our defeat to really show us why. I love those moments. You see, because Jacob, he ran from his brother Esau because Esau wanted to kill him. Guess what God did? He brought Jacob back to Esau many years later. And you remember this story? He had this whole plan of how he'd get away from his brother if it got bad. So God showed up, and they wrestled all night. And Jacob wanted a blessing from God, and so God struck him in his hip to where he had a limp. And God said, I'm changing your name, ja Jacob. You're going to be known as Israel now because you strove with God. And, and by the way, Jacob, you ain't going to be able to run this time. I think there's some of us, we've been running from God so long we forgot we were. But it's time to stop running. Would you please stand as we go to Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, you always bring us back to the point of our failure to show power and weakness, wisdom and foolishness, boldness and fear and restoration and disaster. And so, Father, as we come before you in an invitation, God, I pray that if there is someone here this morning and they have lived the life, but they want to live your life now, God, may they come. Father, for those who are desperately praying for another individual because they are so lost, Lord, may you give them that extra encouragement to keep praying. And Father, for those we just live in constant failure and in constant fear of failure. Lord, may we put all of our trust in you, knowing this, that you have already conquered the world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.